Massachusetts. Number two, Jean and her husband were granted the patent of their home security system on December 6, 1969. Number three, she, she received an award from the Nas National Science Committee for the invention of the home security system. Number four, her daughter Norma Brown followed in her footsteps and became a nurse and an inventor who made who has more than ten inventions. Number five, she and her husband lived in Queens, New York, which they considered very unsafe due to it to its high crime rate and slow police response. if there were no black people. Have you ever wondered what would the world be like if there were no black people? Father of black history is Dr. Carter G. Wilson. One morning, a little boy named Thomas woke up and asked his mother, Mom, what if there were no black people in the world? His mother thought about that for a moment and then said, son, follow me around today and let's just see what it would be like if there were no black people in the world. Now go get dressed and we will get started. Thomas ran to his room to put on his clothes and shoes. His mother took one look at him and said, Thomas, where are your shoes? Son, I must iron your clothes. Why are they so wrinkled? When she reached for the ironing board, 
It was no longer there. You see, Sarah Boom, a black woman, invented the iron. And without Jan E. Mixinger, a black man inventing the shoe lasting machine. Oh, well, she said, please go and do something to your hair. Thomas ran in his room to comb his hair, but the comb was not there. You see, Walter Simon, a black man, invented the comb. Thomas decided to just brush his hair, but the brush was gone. Lydia O. Newman, a black female, invented the brush. Well, this was a sight. Thomas had no shoes, wrinkled clothes, and his hair was a mess. Even his mom's hair was a mess. See, Madam C.J. Walker was one of the first African-American female entrepreneurs. She created many hair care products for black women. Mom, Tom, Mom told Thomas Let's do our chores around the house and then take a trip to the grocery store. Thomas's job was to sweep the floor. He swept and swept and swept. When he reached for the dustpan, it was not there. You see Lloyd P. Ray, a black man, invented the dustpan. <coughs> so Thomas swept his pile over in the corner and left it there. He then decided to mop the floor, but the mop was gone. You see, Thomas W. Stewart, a black man, invented the mop. Thomas yelled to his mom. Mom, I'm not having any luck. Well, son, she said, let me finish washing these clothes and we will prepare a list for the grocery store. When she was finished, she went to place the clothes in the dryer. But it was not there. You see, George T. Sampson, a black man, invented the clothes dryer. Mom asked Thomas to get a pencil and some paper to prepare their list for the market. Thomas ran for the paper and pencil, but noticed that the pencil lead was broken. Well, he was out of luck because John Love, a black man, invented the, the pencil sharpener. Mom reached for a pen, but it was not there because William Purvis, a black man, invented the fountain pen. Another black man, Lee Burns, invented the typewriting machine. W.A. Lovett, another black man, invented the advanced printing press. Thomas and his mother decided to head to the market. Well, when Thomas opened the door, he noticed the grass was almost five feet tall. You see, you see, the lawnmower was invented by John Burr, a black man. Thomas and his mom made their way over to the car and found that it just wouldn't go. You see, Richard Spikes, a black man, invented the automatic gear shift. And Joseph Gamio invented a supercharged system for eternal combustion engines. Without these, the cars wouldn't work. They noticed that the few cars that were moving on the road were running into each other and having wrecks because there was no traffic signals. You see, Garrett A. Morgan, a black man, invented the traffic signal. Well, it was getting late, so they walked to the market, got their groceries, and returned home. Just when they were about to put away the milk, eggs, and butter, they noticed the refrigerator was gone. You see, John Stander, a black man, invented the, the refrigerator. So they just left the food on the counter. By this time, Thomas noticed he was getting mighty, mighty cold. Mom went to turn up the heat. However, Alice Parker, a female, invented the heating furnace, so they didn't have any heat. Even in the summertime, they would have, they would have been out of luck because Frederick Jones, a black man, invented the air conditioning. It was almost time for Thomas's father to arrive home. He usually took the bus. But there was no bus. Buses came from electric trolleys, which were invented by another black man, Albert R. Robinson. He usually 
actually took the elevator from his office on the 20th floor. But there was no elevator. Because Alexander Miles, a black man, invented the elevator. He also usually dropped off the office mail at a nearby mailbox. But it was no longer there because Philip Downing, a black man, invented the letter drop mailbox. And Will and William Berry, another black man, invented the post marking and canceling machine, which is how we get stamps. Thomas and his mother sat at the kitchen table with their heads in their hands. When the father arrived, he asked, Why are you sitting in the dark? Why? Because Lewis Howard Vladimir, a black man, invented the filament within the light bulb. It, without a filament, a light bulb would, would, wouldn't turn on. Thomas quickly learned what it would be like if there were no black people in the world. Daily life would be a lot more difficult, not to mention if he were ever sick and needed blood. Charles Drew, a black scientist, found a way to preserve and store blood, which led to his starting the, led to his starting the world's first blood bank. What if a family member needed to have heart surgery? This would not have been possible without Dr. Daniel Hill Williams, a black doctor who performed the first open heart surgery. What would the world be like if there were no black people? You don't have to ever wonder, like Thomas, what the world would be like without African Americans. It's quite clear. Life as we know it would be very different. What would the world be like, Leah, if there were no black people? Life would be difficult and we wouldn't have the stuff that we have today. And what about you, Felicity? We wouldn't have necessary we wouldn't have the necessary stuff in life. Forever? Life would be difficult. Jaden? It would be it would be very difficult for everybody because because you would be a brush. American inventor famous for her patented system of central heating using natural gas. In the 1920s, using natural gas to power a heating furnace was a revolutionary idea that conserved energy and paved the way for the central heating systems we all have in our homes today. Public was filed on December 23, 1990 for a fuel system invention. The design allowed cool air to be drawn into the frame, then converted through a heating and chamber that delivered warm air to ducts to individualize rooms of the house. The concept of central heating was around before public was born, but the design was unique because it used natural gas as its fuel instead of coal or wood that had been previously used. Parker is said to to have been inspired for her design because she felt her fireplace was not effectively enough warming and warming her home throughout the cold in New Jersey winter. Her invention was convert, convert because it was it meant that people did not have to go outside and chop or buy wood. It also decreases the risk of household building fires that heating units posed by eliminating the need to leave a burning fireplace on throughout the night. Although her intentional intentional design were never used, her idea that natural gas and air ducts could be used to heat different areas of a house was a major step towards heating systems used today. Very little is known about Alice Parker's life. She was born in 1895 
and grew up in Morristown, New Jersey, and attended classes at Howard University Academy in Washington, D.C. The academy was a high school connected to Howard University, and in 1910, Parker earned a certificate with honors from the academy. Parker securing a patent was a remarkable milestone, as she was an African American woman in the early 20th century. Century, since filling her patent preceded both of the civil rights movement and the women's liberation movement, which subsequently, subsequently removed many of the barriers that women of her generation faced at the time. African African women. Had, a, had very limited opportunities and Parker's receiving of a patent for her invention during that time was a truly unusual and outstanding achievement. Thank you. Joseph Richard Winters, August 29, 1824 through November 29, 1916, was an African American of all the nations. An inventor who on May 7, 1878 received U.S. patent number 303-517 for a wagon mounted fire escape ladder. On April 8, 1879, he received U.S. patent number 214-224 for an improvement on the ladder. On May 16, 1882, he received U.S. patent number 258-186 for a fire escape ladder that could be affixed to buildings. It has been erroneously cited that Winter was the original inventor of the wagon mounted fire escape. Winter's version was patented 29 years after George Hudson and George Canelo initially introduced the idea in 1849. However, when, however Winter's ladder replaced the wooden ladder with a metal frame and parallel steps. Winter's innovation was utilized by the Chambersburg, Pennsylvania Fire Department who mounted the ladder on a horse-drawn wagon. Joseph R. Winters was born in Leesburg, Virginia to an African-American brickmaker and Sean Eddy, a mother who was the daughter of noted her herbalist and medical practitioner, referred to as the Indian doctor woman. The family related to Chambersburg, Pennsylvania around 1840. Joseph Winters worked as a farmer and later as a mechanic for the King of Hair and Valley Railroad. He was noted a fisherman and a hunter. Black and white residents long remembered him for his great nature, knowledge, and skills, especially in fishing and fly making. He was also a poet, poet and lyricist and composed a song supporting the 1900 presidential campaign of William Jenny Bryan, as well as. Another song entitled Ten Days After the Battle of Gettysburg. He also wrote he also wrote an autobiography with the same title, but no copies seem to have survived. During the time Winters lived in Chambersburg, he was active in the un Underground Railroad. It has been said that it was Winters who arranged the famous meeting between Frederick Douglass and John Brown before the latter aboard to to take the federal arsenal at Harper's Ferry in 1859. Winters died in 1916 and is buried in Mount Vernon Cemetery in Chambersburg. My name is Anesa Samuel, but I will be reading in the absences of Janaya Alley. Patricia Bath was 76 years old when she died. She was born on November 4th, 1942 in New York, and she died on May 30th, 2019 at a medical center in San Francisco. California, and she invented a new advice and technique for cataract surgery, surgery known as laser fracture, and she changed the world by making an eye surgery. And she was blind for 30 years, and her parents named Gladys Bath and Rupert Bath. She had a husband named Benny J. Prim, and Patricia Bath died with cancer, and she is famous for eye surgery and made it in the United States of America. And her sister name was Erica Plante Jean Bath, and her brother name was Rupert, and they still use allergy for surgery. Thank you. Facts about George Washington Carver. George Washington Carver was born in 1864 near Diamond Grove, Missouri. He was known for being a scientist slash inventor. 
He promoted waste to prevent soil depletion. George Washington Carver made stuff out of peanuts like milk, plastics, paints, dyes, cosmetics, medicines, oils, soaps, ink, and wood stains. And he made stuff out of sweet potatoes, like molasses, post-it stamp glue, flour, vinegar, and synthetic oil, and a type of jazz. There was a color film of George Washington Carver in 1937. He was also most known for his use of peanuts, contrary to popular belief. George Washington Carver did not invent peanut butter. Audrey, he did not invent peanut butter. He still made it homemade. George also made stuff with sweet potatoes as well. George Washington Carver began with the idea of crop rotation in Tuskegee. Yeah. Experimental field school. Harvard was a peanut It was a simple crop to grow. Carver's invention included hundreds of product, pro, products, including more than 300 from peanuts. On January 5, 1943, George Washington Carver died mm -hmm. at the age of 78. 99% of failure comes from people who who have the habit of making excuses. Quote from George Washington. Sixth grade presents black history. Sixth grade shows Matande Odeku. Matande Odeku was the first African American neurosurgeon trained in the United States and Africa's first neurosurgeon. Born Emmanuel Olatunde on June 29, 1927, in Lagos, Nigeria, Odeku received his MD from the Howard University College of Medicine in 1954. Of Yoruba her heritage, Latunde was born in Lagos, Nigeria. His father was a native of Al, while his mother was a Lagosian. He attended Methodist Boys High School, Lagos, and proceeded to Howard University and graduated in zoology in 1950. He was subsequently awarded a scholarship to study medicine at Howard University, earning his MD in 1954. Although Latune was supported often multiple appointments, including two distinguished academic neurosurgery faculties in the United States, however, he chose to return to Nigeria. Latune came to the University of the University of Aberdeen. In 1962, he, as the first neurosurgeon, neurosurgeon in West Af Africa. In 1962, he was appointed as a senior faculty and became a fellow of the American College of Surgeons. In 1965, he was appointed as a, a, as a professor of neurosurgery from 1968 to 1971, serving as the head of the Department of Surgery and the Dean of, of the University of Aberdeen College of Medicine. He also established the National and West Africa Postgraduate Medical Colleges and the initiation processes as the, at the University of Aberdeen. College of Medicine, presently performed in Nigeria and Nigerian medical schools. Latunde was also appointed an editor. He became he made significant contributions to the neurosurgical literature, publishing 61 scientific articles over a period of 12 years. Latunde was the Howard was awarded with the Howard University Alumni Award for being for distinguished service. After passing the Lynchure Medical Exam of Canada, Latunde spent the following year in the Ni Nigeria as a medical officer at Locust General Hospital in, in 1961. He returned to the United States and was offered a residency position training under Dr. Khan from 1966 to 1960 at the University of Michigan. Afterwards, he trained in neurology during Dr. Webb Haymaker at the University of at Walter Reed Medical Center in Washington, D.C. He studied pediatric neurosurgery residency at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia 
under Dr. Eugene Spence, curated of the Spence Holter Valve for the treating hydrocephalus seeds. In the 1961, he appended instructor of neuroanatomy and neurosurgery at the College of Michigan, Howard University. In 1972, his health began to fail from complications of diabetes. He died on August 20, 1974 at Hammer Smith Hospital, London, and was laid to rest at St. Peter's Church, Burnham, England. Thank you, Dr. Matunde, for your accomplishments. My name is Madison Benjamin and I'm in the seventh grade. My name is Josh Anderson and I'm in the second grade. Jonah Fidona was an African American inventor from Newport, Rhode Island, best known for his patent on a modern day letterbox. Stella D. Downer successfully held at least five patents with his United, United States patent office. Among his significant inventions were a screen letterbox and medical device. For operating mail, screen rail, roll switches. Phil invented many mailboxes all around the world that helped many people from getting, in, from getting into the post office when instead you could grab up and put your mailbox in the mailbox. Mail in the mailbox. Philip was born on March 22, 1857. He died in Boston on June 8, 1934, which means he was 77 when he died. He had a wife named Elephant Howard and his two kids named Antonio Downey and Philip B. Downey Jr. On June 17, 1990, the U.S. Patent Office approved Downey's application for his new and useful invention improvements in the street, uh, street railway switches Downey invented, which could, which could uh, instead allow the drop off mail near one home and easy pickups for by a letter carrier. His idea from the hinge allowing prevented rain or snow which entering the mailbox and damaging the mail. My name is Tamara Wilson and I'm in the seventh grade and my presentation is about Frederick McQueen Jones by Tamara Wilson. Jones also invented, what did he invent? Jones also invented an air conditioning unit for military field hospitals, a refrigerator for military field kitchens, a self-starting gas engine, and a series of devices for movies, projectors, and box offices, equipment that give, gave tickets and made change. When was he born? He was born in May 17, 1893, Cincinnati, Ohio. His childhood, Frederick McClain Jones was born in Cincinnati, Ohio, May 17, 1893, to a white father and black mother. His mother dis deserted him when he was a young child. His father struggled to raise him on his own, but by the time Frederick was seven years old, he sent young Jones to live with a peasant in Kentucky. His death. He died February 21st, 1961 in Annapolis. Minnesota. Thank you. Papa, Papa, are you okay? I want to go get Mama. Mama, come quick. What is it, child? What's wrong? It's Papa. He's hurt. <laughs>
making horse feed. Now the cow took a bar to him, he don't push him and let his pony stall. He showed me with a fist in my face and a boot in my side. Hey. Mm. <sighs> That's what I think of Owen. That's as fresh as pony. Now you be careful what you say now, boy. I want to hear you. He beat you too. Or worse. Franklin, Franklin, I just heard over here in NASA talking. He said you're going to be sold. No! Great. Oh, no. Sold? <laughs> yes, NASA will give your father away for money. Yeah. But he can't do that, can he? He can. <laughs> but that's not fair. We're a family. We belong together. We are slaves. We are property. He can do whatever he wants to us. He can spit on us. He can beat us. He thinks more of a character than he is a bus child. But why would Matthew do such a thing? We've done nothing wrong. He thinks about a wife to the trap. Frankly, he has to get some work done. But it wasn't my fault. It doesn't matter. The decision already has been made. No! Perhaps you do. Did you hear what I just said? We have no choice. We are slaves. You do, but what? But it might not be an easy one to make. I am a conductor. Do you know who I am? Like on the railroad? In a way, yes. Ain't no trace to go underground. Cool. Shh. If anyone hear us, we all be dead. I've heard people like you and your organization, but we can't come with you. It's far too dangerous. Go with them where? Child, please be quiet. If we stay here, we can separate. You heard the man. I'm the be so. I may never see you or our son ever again. Leave together. At least we have a chance of freedom. Freedom! It's a great risk, I'm afraid. What risk? What are we talking about? The Underground Railroad was not a real railroad, of course. It was a network of houses and other buildings used to help slaves escape to freedom in the northern states or Canada. This network of escape routes was described using railroad terms. Passengers were runaway slaves fleeing from the south. Their guides were called conductors, and they led them from one station to another. Where fugitives would rest and eat. But slave owners did not take kindly to runaways. If a slave was discovered missing, search parties would be formed and bloodhounds assembled in order to find the missing party. If captured, slaves could be beaten severely, tortured, or even killed for their attempts. Can it really be done, Papa? Can we escape? One way to find out, son. was an African-American inventor of the late 19th century who transcended racial barriers in the United States. He was born in Circleville, Ohio. After he moved to Wyndham, Minnesota, he met and married Miss Candace. And when there was two children and together they had a daughter born in 1876 named Grace. Shortly after her birth, the family relocated to Duluth, Minnesota. Here, Alexander became the first black member of the Dutch Chamber of the Comrades and operated a barbershop out of the St. Louis Hotel. In that one day,
Sunday while playing on the wholesale elevator, Grace accidentally fell down the elevator shaft, almost ending her life. You see, in those days, opening and closing the elevator doors of both shafts and the elevator had to be completely manually by either the elevator operator or by the passenger contributing great habits of the elevator. Miles got the idea to design an elevator that was able to open and close its own doors with the elevator shaft doors. When the elevator would arrive or depart from a given floor, the doors would move automatically. Miles attached a flexible belt to the elevator cage. When the belt came into contact with the drums positioned along the elevator shaft just above and below the floors, it allowed the elevator shaft door to operate at the appropriate time. The elevator doors themselves were automatic through a series of levers and rollers. The influence of his elevator patient is still seen in modern design. Since the automatic open doors and the closing of the doors of the elevator shaft doors is a standard feature.